Today I am finally trying Da Vinci watercolors. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Irit. I'm an artist based in Austria in Europe and on my channel I share my artsy adventures. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, leave me a comment and of course I would love for you to subscribe. So let's get into today's video. Hey everyone, today I want to show you a few fun things. I've just received, well not just, I recently received this gorgeous palette that was curated for me by uh, one of my lovely, lovely patrons and she very generously sent me a lot of paint from Da Vinci, which is a US-based brand that is kind of hard to find here in Europe, but I really wanted to try it. I've been hearing a lot about it. Most of you watching this channel are from North America, and I really felt that I kind of wanted to get to know this paint so I can see, uh, you know, where it stands compared to my favorites. And I have been playing with it quite a bit, and I have to say, I absolutely love it. So if you are in the US or Canada, uh, I think Da Vinci is an amazing option. Yeah, so today I thought what we could do is I'm actually going to kind of follow uh, one of the first tutorials in my book, which talks about swatching. So that's kind of the first thing I feel like you should do when you get new watercolors. Um, whether you're new to watercolors or not, you want to get to know your paints. and. Uh, this is a really just like fun, easy way to do that. So I suggest a few ways to do that in the book. And uh, you can sketch your palette. That's a fun exercise. You can simply swatch the, the paints. But today I'm going to, you can use stamps and of course you can use my stamps if you have them. But today I'm going to use one of my favorite ways and that is to kind of use mixed media to swatch your paints and kind of do fun uh, color matching with your other supplies. So we're going to do that today. And if you are interested in my book, you can find it on Amazon. All the details will be below. And if you prefer to get an ebook, which, um, you know, I, I mean, on one hand, I really love having something to hold in my hand, but with the ebook, the colors are uh, more kind of vibrant and, you know, you don't have like a physical book. So if you prefer that format, uh, that one is available on my website. And I want to show you what I did just to give you some ideas. So this is a Stalogy notebook. This has like this super, super thin paper, which handles water and watercolors really beautifully. It doesn't, it makes the pages crinkle. Now this is not for everyone, but if you like that effect, this is, a really, really fun sketchbook to have. I have been really loving it. So here I kind of swatched the colors. Now I have to say before I get into all the swatching and I'll tell you all the colors, um, Jennifer, my patron, did an amazing job choosing probably all of the colors that I would have chosen myself. Uh, so I think she knows <laughs> where my uh, color stories and color cravings are. But I have to say, I've heard quite a bit about this one particular color called Artemis and this is the Da Vinci version of Daniel Smith Moonglow. I have to say I've painted with it a little bit. I haven't used it for a long time. I've been using Moonglow for years. I've gone through several tubes. This is better. I like this one more and I'm going to get myself a tube. Um, it separates more than the Daniel Smith now one. Now I want to say when it comes to separation, it really depends also on the paper, how it's going to show. So you might not get the same effect on other papers, but I have to show you. So this is Artemis from Da Vinci and this is Moonglow from Daniel Smith. And you can see it also has beautiful separation, but uh, hello. Look at this, look at this. That is so good. I absolutely love it. So for me, it's a winner. 
and I didn't think something could replace my moon glow, but uh, this is going to. It is definitely going to. Uh, okay, so this is one that I did. This is in the Stalogy notebook. And then another one, I tried this uh, Hanemule 100% cotton sketchbook and just had some fun with it. So this is a little bit more loose version of swatching. And then I just painted a bit and I continued to paint kind of to get to know these. Uh, I have to say the paper is lovely. Uh, what I... It's just... Besides the besides that, it's just a little bit of a boring <laughs> sketchbook and the paper is a little bit thick, which kind of makes me feel uh, that it just makes it a little bit more precious. Um, yeah, I, I think for a 100% cotton sketchbook, this is a great option, especially if you're in Europe, because the other options that I've seen, I don't think they are from European brands. Uh, I know, what are they called? The company that makes these cute little palettes. I forget. They have 100% cotton sketchbooks that are, for me personally, harder to find and more expensive. And these are very, very readily available. So if you're in Europe and you want a sketchbook that is 100% cotton, this is a nice option. I just don't like the black cover and I don't know. I think in a sketchbook I could live with a bit thinner paper. But that's just me, that's my personal preferences. So before we get into the actual swatching, what you wanna do is you wanna spray your paints lightly. You don't want them to become like super gooey, but just a little bit to activate them and this will make everything so much easier. Uh, I'm using this Royal and Langnickel Majestic, what are you called? Mini Majestic, I want to say. It's very hard to read. It's a quarter, I guess, quarter inch dagger brush. If you're new to watercolors, then it is very, very important to swatch them. It's not true to every single medium out there, but with watercolors, it is particularly important because a lot of the colors, like here, like these three here, they just look dark. You have no real way of knowing how they actually look on paper just by looking at the pans. And so you really want to swatch your watercolors. So I'm going to start with the yellows. And yeah, I'm going to start with this one. This one is the Nickel Titanite Yellow. Hopefully I didn't butcher that name. And this is a color actually I wanted to try for a long time. The Daniel Smith, uh, Daniel Smith has a version of it. And this one is actually really, really lovely. It's a little bit warmer than I thought this color would be, but I'm okay with that because I love warm yellows. Then the next one I'm going to try is Naples Yellow. And this, you can see, it's not as kind of pastel -y as my go-to Schmincke one, but I think it's a beautiful option and I really, really like it. Next, we have Quinacridone Gold. This one is a classic. Lots of people use it and for good reason. This is a very kind of orangey, earthy yellow. Uh, I love it every brand makes it i think the da vinci uh, version is lovely i don't think it's different than any other ones that i've tried but it's really pretty next we have gold ochre this was one of the like surprise winners for me um it kind of reminds me i'm very in the last couple of years i've really fallen in love with these kind of very orangey yellows or oranges that are a little bit opaque and not super super bright so they have a bit of earthiness to them um, my go-to is the lucas naples yellow reddish but this one is beautiful so this is called gold ochre from da vinci and i really love it and it plays so well with my bright pinks which is how i usually use these kinds of colors um really really lovely really enjoying this color. The next one is raw sienna and you can see this one is just a, look a little bit more on the brown side. Actually, usually I don't have any siennas in my palette. I didn't see the need to, to have them, but this one is really lovely. 
Next we have Violet Iron Oxide. And this one is, if I want to use more neutral colors, this is usually where I head towards. Um, it will usually be kind of more muted pinks or or violets or greens and or purples. And this one is uh, really interesting. It kind of reminds me of the Daniel Smith. I think they're the violet umber. I think they have a color. Um, so this one is nice. And then the next one is the Artemis, which is kind of blew my mind a little bit because I didn't think I didn't think Moon Glow had anything to worry about. So again, it really, really depends on the paper, the way this paint is going to behave. So we'll see how it behaves on this paper. Okay, let's move on to the reds. So quinacridone red is a color I enjoy. It's usually more of like a corally bright color. Daniel Smith has a color called quinacridone coral, which is comparable to this one. And then most brands will call theirs quinacridone red. Uh, I really like it. It's a lot of fun uh, when you're painting florals and you can see when you water it down, it's just like this beautiful shade of warm pink. Then we have another color that I would scent. This is Carmine. It's a nice version of Carmine. It's just not my usual kind of go-to shade. Uh, but if you enjoy using that, then this is a nice version. Next we have Rose Matter Quinacridone. And this is a nice kind of primary. If you like your colors, you know, if you paint uh, florals and you like pink florals, but you don't like anything too vibrant, too neon, too fluorescent, then this is a beautiful um, kind of remind. Gives me quinacridone rose vibes. Now the next pink is more my cup of tea, and this one is called Opus. And I actually really, really love it. It's not as blue as my ride or die pink, which is, let's all say it together, Holbein's Bright Rose, <laughs> but it's also not uh, garish like uh, the opera from Daniel Smith, which I really, really just, I can't use that color. Uh, this is lovely. I absolutely love this and I might also buy more of this because I think for me this would be a good substitute for quinacridone rose. I love using quinacridone rose. I like the Daniel Smith one because it's the most vibrant that I found but it still lacks a little bit of that punch that I personally like and I love my bright rose but sometimes I, I want something like a little bit warmer not so blue and I think opus is or might be like the my choice. Uh, from this range. So next let's move on to Cobalt Violet. If you've been on my channel you know that Cobalt Violet is one of my favorite colors. I know so many of you have bought it after I talked so many times about it and other people love it too so that makes me very very happy. It is a notoriously... sorry it is, a, it is a notoriously hard to formulate color. I think the pigment just really, really hardens the paint. And so a lot of the um, versions that I've tried are just very, very gooey um, or they harden and it's very hard to use them. But this one is great. It also leans very, very red, which is how, or very pink, which is how I enjoy my cobalt violets. Other brands have kind of bluer versions. Uh, Schmincke has a much bluer version, M Gram as well. Um, da Vinci got it perfect for me, and I might um, switch from Rembrandt, which is my current go to cobalt violet, uh, to the Da Vinci, uh, because the Rembrandt one does get a bit gooey. Okay, next we have Lilac. This is very similar to um, Daniel Smith's Wisteria, 
This is kind of that violet color, but more opaque and without the gorgeous granulation of the cobalt violet. I think it's really pretty. I would use it more like a gouache color, but when I'm painting, I really, really prefer the uh, transparency and the granulation of cobalt violet. So I tend to, like I see when I have these two in my palette, I tend to always go for the cobalt violet, especially because I tend to be heavy handed. And with this color, you can get kind of a heavy application uh, because it is more opaque. Next we have permanent, I want to say magenta quinacridone, hopefully that's the correct name. And this is a beautiful darker color, which I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I have, but I absolutely love it. And I paint a lot of florals, and this is such a beautiful color for like the center of the flower, or for a little bit of like shadows. Um, I really, really like it. I really like the tone of it. So it's a beautiful color. I have to say like kudos to Jennifer, which just got it so right. Next we have lavender. This is a convenience color, which I personally really, really love. And I also enjoy kind of playing around with how it mixes with these kinds of colors. They usually neutralize each other. Let's see. So let's take some gold ochre and see how they do. And I just really like they create these kind of lighter shades of gray that I find very attractive. See? So let's, yeah, see, they completely neutralize each other. And you get this really pretty gray. So I like it also as is, straight from the tube. This is. Most brands, I think this is just like ultramarine blue with white. So if you have white on your palette, you don't need this color, but I use it a lot. And uh, I think the Da Vinci version is really lovely. It's quite on the opaque side. Next we have, I wanna show you all the blues that Jennifer sent me. My favorite is the French ultramarine red shade because it is the most reddish, which is how I like my ultramarine. And that's this one. And then I'll show you the other ones that she sent me. We have the ultramarine middle, this one, which is not as red as this. And then we have the ultramarine green shade, which is also nice, but again, not as red as this. So this one would be my go-to, like, I would go for this. And then she also sent me a color that I didn't expect to love as much as I do. This one, I'll put it just here on the side. This is beautiful. This is called Cobalt Blue Deep. It's made from the usual pigment that they use to make cobalt, which is PB28. And this is the most beautiful version of Cobalt Blue that I've ever seen. It's the color, Cobalt Blue is a color, I have several brands. I always try to incorporate it into my palette and then when I'm actually painting it never gives me that the feels that ultramarine does but this one I don't know I think it's just it's very very close to ultramarine so I guess that's why I like it but it's a beautiful beautiful version of cobalt okay moving on to cobalt turquoise deep so this one is Again, it's a color that many brands make and I like it, but mostly I find myself using a color I will show you in a minute. Then we have a color called Seafoam. This is looks like a phthalo turquoise, super, super intense. This makes beautiful greens, especially if you mix it, I'll show you. If you mix it, let's try the raw sienna with one of these like earthy tones, you get very, very, you can see that, like these olive greens that I personally love. Uh, so this is a good color for me for mixing greens. But then my go-to turquoise is always this color, which is, I think probably, I can't see the pigment, but usually this is made from PG50. And every brand makes this color, and I usually love 
all the versions of it. I'm not that particular. The Da Vinci one is beautiful as well. They call it cobalt turquoise. And the last but not least is perline green. This is a beautiful color. I used it for a long time. Uh, I love using these kinds of greens in florals for shadows. I'm going to water it down a bit so you can see the tone of it. And I really love this kind of tone. I mostly switch to Zoazite from Daniel Smith because I want that granulation. Uh, but this is a beautiful color. Okay, so we have swatched all the colors. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a few other materials. So first I'm going to start with some Neo colors. I have here, these are the Neocolor 2 that are water soluble and these are the Neocolor 1s that are not water soluble. So I've really enjoyed the kind of tone on tone effect since my scrapbooking days. And it doesn't always work, I don't have like a perfect match, you know, from every medium that I use, but it's just a really fun exercise. Now these are mostly still wet and so that's why I decided to start with the pastels. If you want to do this with pens and some pencils, depends on the pencil, I want to wait for it to dry. But the concept is kind of the same. We're just like matching the colors and just creating some textures. The whole point here is to get to know your colors. I have here a selection of my current favorite pencils. Let's see, I have here watercolor pencils. These are the Carandash Museum Aquarelle, and these are fun. Actually, if, now it's kind of dry already, but if you do have some wet paint, these are really fun. You can drag the paint when it's wet. You can really drag it and kind of create fun effects. If you're struggling with kind of mark making, if you see other people do it so easily, this is a good way to start practicing because you just naturally have kind of a reason to do this. So you have a plan and then you can just work with what you have. So fill out spaces. Pencil I got recently, I'm not convinced. This is the Lyra Color Giants. I don't know. It's kind of rough. I think I give it to my kids. I am becoming really, really good and ruthless with purging stuff from, probably art supplies are harder for me to purge, but anywhere else in my house, I'm getting really, really good at it. And it makes me very happy to live in a clutter-free environment. So you could just like have fun. You don't have to be so confined to color matching. So here it's a bit empty, let's see. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That is a blackberry and that's a great match. This is Derwent Color Soft. This is a beautiful match to the Artemis. I'm done with the swatching. I am now quite familiar with these colors and obviously you want to continue to play with them and mix them and um, see how they react with each other and how they play with like your favorite paper. I'm going to show you some painting um, process videos so you can see how they behave. Ideally for me, I don't uh, use palettes based on a brand. So ideally for me, I would incorporate my like superstar colors into my regular palette and I mean, look at the beautiful granulation of the cobalt. That is so pretty, cobalt violet. And then the Artemis, just lovely, lovely color. Um, there are definitely a, like a few winners here that are standing out. And I will definitely, once I run out of certain colors, I will definitely consider replacing them with the Da Vinci. Now, I try to buy locally. Uh, so for me, that would mean European brands because it just, you know, it supports my local economy and I pay less because I don't pay uh, import taxes and customs and all that. But if I have superstar colors, ones that are unique to a brand, 
I will splurge on that brand, even if it's not from Europe. Uh, that's why I buy certain colors from Daniel Smith that I can't find in other brands. And there are definitely a few here that I'm going to purchase um, in my kind of go-to palette, even though Da Vinci is an American brand, so it's not local to me. However, if you're in North America, um, these are beautiful. And the formulation is lovely. These are all kind of tube paints poured into pans. I don't, I think they have also pan paints, but mostly I think they come in tubes and large tubes, which if you're familiar with, you know, the colors that you like to use, that is the most economical um, way to buy watercolors. So I highly recommend just getting large tubes. And if you know you're going to use the color, if you know it's a color you love, and uh, if not, then I highly suggest finding someone to do a swap like I managed to do with Jennifer, although I think I definitely got the better deal here because she sent me so many beautiful colors. And I'm really, really happy that I got to try um, this brand and also send her some um, European colors. So look at this. This is the, I think it was the gold ochre. Yeah. And the lavender. Look at this and look at this gray. You will not find such a gray straight from a tube. Okay. The last part of today's video are some painting process. Swatching is great, but at some point you have to start using the paint and, you know, paint with it and see what it does, how it behaves. So that's what I did. I had a really great time. I kind of went to my go-to subjects, which are abstract florals and a beach scene. Uh, that's what I feel comfortable with. And this is a great opportunity to try new supplies with kind of a subject and composition and a process you're familiar with. Uh, you don't want to start too many new things together, I find at least for me. And so I'm going to play you some music. I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy the rest of it. Um, you know, sit back, relax and watch some watercolor painting. Uh, always relaxing for me to paint and also watch it. So if you have any questions about these paints, please leave them below. And if you use them, let us know what you think of them. What's your favorite colors? I would love to know if you think there's a color that I would love and is not on my palette, then please let me know. So have a wonderful weekend. And yeah, I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye bye.